Let's go down to Rome's. So the Vikings let us down. The Gophers let us down. The Twins game one let us down. At least Twins game two. Mm, mercifully. Mer mercifully. But uh, Vikings allegedly one and four. And things are a little bit tough right now. And so it is what it is. Uh, again, a talented football team that just can't get out of its own damn way. Uh, but here are 10 uh, truths uh, about the 2023 allegedly one and four Vikings. Number one. Vikings are giving away the season, and that is the truth, and that is a hallmark, and it's just, it's just ridiculous at this point, where seemingly every single game, they're just giving uh, the other team an extra possession with great field position with just a killer turnover, and it's usually a fumble, and... I don't, I, it's almost like this team has the yips, like full-on Chuck Knobloch. Like, they cannot hang on to the football because they're thinking about it too much. And, you know, in practice, I'm sure the Kevin O'Connell position coaches, you know, uh, running back, wide receiver, tight end, they're all talking about it. Hang on to the football. And it's something that these kids, have, these guys have done since they've been kids. And now that they're thinking hard about it, they're worried about making a mistake, and that's when you make mistakes. But 12 turnovers in five games, uh, they're dead last in the NFL. It's ridiculous. They've lost the turnover battle every single game, including their win against Carolina. And it's the, it's the main reason that the Vikings are 1-4. And, and the fact that you know, people make a big deal about single-score games. You know, The Vikings 11-0 last year, regular season 0-4 this year. This is why. Turnovers is why. Number two... The defense is fun, but it's still lacking. And, yeah, it's great that they're getting pressure. And uh, love me some Brian Flores. Uh, love love me the blitzing at times. Maybe don't blitz the house on third and 18. I don't know. But they're still bottom of the uh, third of the league in points and yards allowed. And the Chiefs, I mean, yeah, it's Mahomes. Yeah, it's Travis Kelsey. Yeah, it's whatever. But they were 9-15 to on third down. Also, they converted uh, after getting set up in first and 25. They converted the third and 18. And it seemed like, especially the second half, they literally had no plans for Travis Kelsey, who, who was dinged up. So the whole uh, – also, I, I feel like – Halftime adjustments have been lacking in general. Uh, the yeah, uh, a, a lot of to do has been made about the Vikings being slow in the first quarter. They've been really slow in the third quarter as well, and that uh, is largely due to uh, other teams adjusting. You know, coaching's making halftime adjustments, and you know, a number of the games so far this season, the other team just controls the ball in the third quarter, whether it's two long drives uh, like in Kansas City or one a long hash drive, and it just seems like the Vikings aren't putting up points in the third quarter because they never had the freaking ball. Next up, number three, Kevin O'Connell's uh, game management. So he's a young coach, hasn't had a ton of seasoning, uh, hasn't had a ton of experience calling plays, and I, I respect that he's learning on the job. I respect that he takes ownership of mistakes, but you know, timeout usage, uh, where the team, like, how do, you, how do you have to burn a timeout before you get a delay a game after a three yard run? H how how does that happen? Where it's sort of understandable. Say you have say you're running all verts or you have a long developing uh, developing play and it's incomplete but you got receivers you know 40 50 yards downfield that that's sort of understandable but on a three yard run you can't get a play call in you can't get huddled up you can't get a line of scrimmage uh and you have to burn a timeout vikings have used up all their timeouts between uh, a bad challenge which I, I i understand like the whole well did he complete the catch kelsey was down Kelsey was down before Metellus ripped the ball out of his hand. So I think it was a bad challenge. Uh, and also getting players coached up on these uh, these game situations where I know, I know everyone can blame, well, Kirk Cousins should get them line, lined up. All these players should know the jobs. What's the point of coaching then? You know, seriously, what, what is the point? It, it seems like these guys just sort of freeze or the time, the extra time that it takes for them to line up or extra time that it takes for them to get a play call in. I don't know what that is, but uh, again, I understand everyone wants to blame it on Kevin or on uh, Kirk Cousins, but at a certain point, uh, it's the head coach's responsibility, especially the offensive play calling head coach, right? And you got to call balls and strikes. I mean, when Zimmer was horrible at game management, which was often – Call it out. When Kevin O'Connell is lacking in that department, too, you got to call it out. Uh, next up, number four. This is just an undisciplined football team right now. It is. And it, undisciplined doesn't necessarily mean just, like, personal fouls and, and penalties and stuff like that. But at times, they're just sloppy. 
Whether it's ball control, whether it's drops, I mean, that's seven, including you know, Madison dropping that screen, which would have been a walk in game tying touchdown. And it's just been, it's a real big issue. And I don't know if it's mental. I, I don't know what it is. It's not, I mean, the talent is there. They're just not playing to their potential. And that is at the foot of the head coach where you could say, well, the players just got to show up and play. Uh, again, what's the point of having, having coaches then? Uh, again, I actually prefer the term manager when it comes to being a head coach because that's what you do. You manage energy. You manage egos. You manage expectations. Uh, you manage getting them ready on game day. And the Vikings have just been really sloppy overall. Next up, number five. Addison is wide receiver one if J.J. misses, which, you know, knocking on all the wood, hopefully J.J. is just a little hamstring tweak and he, he'll be back against the Bears, which we'll need him. Uh, but Addison, uh, so I, I don't know what's going on with K.J. K.J., wh- whether it's drops, whether it's just errors, I, I don't know. But Addison is clearly that dude, and he's got three touchdowns so far through five games and six for 64 uh, on nine targets uh, against the Chiefs, and he needs to be more involved. And with J.J. out, uh, you know, the shot in the end zone against Need was to Jordan Addison. So he needs to rise up. Like, if J.J. is missing and the Vikings trying to get up off the canvas and salvage what the hell uh, they can from the season, number three is going to have to be numero uno. Next up, number six, Akers needs more work. Now, I understand his numbers were sort of whatever against the Chiefs. Seven total touches for 18 yards, uh, and Madison was really solid weeks three and four, but yeah, Akers, the thing about Akers is that he's a little bit more explosive, as evidenced by, I mean, he had that run where Derek Nandi just like, uh, if Nandi doesn't make that tackle, I mean, there's a chance Akers scores uh, in that spot. But uh, in terms of being a receiving back, he's great. In terms of being a pass protector, he's phenomenal. And I know we're picking on Madison, but you got two red zone drops that would have been walk-in touchdowns. I don't know if Akers drops those, man. There you go. Uh, next up, number seven, Hawkinson's funk is concerning. Where week three against the Chargers had the fumble and then had the game winner right in the midst, but then dropped it and then pop, popped up into Kenneth Murray's hands. And I, again, I, I don't know if it's the yips or a men, mental thing or what what's going on. Uh, or he's got like a mental block on it. But uh, he had whatever production against the Panthers. Uh, he had three drops uh, at least uh, against the uh, against the Chiefs, and I don't know. Maybe it's expectations that comes with that uh, lucrative contract. Maybe maybe it's him and Kirk not being on the same page. But also, uh, as a guy that is really going to need to step up uh, if JJ does miss some time, I mean. At a certain point, like when does he morph into that tight end one? Like he's got the skill set, he's got the stats, like he's got the chemistry with Kirk. But uh, again, it's not so much the volume; it's just like when it happens, like like a big third down drop or that big end zone drop against the Chargers. It's just just hasn't been good the last three weeks. Next up, number eight, uh, cornerback depth is again an issue. So uh, Caleb Evans potentially is going to miss some time with an injury. Uh, Byron Murphy was. Kind of meh. Uh, Justin, uh, not Justin, Makai Blackman's been uh, relatively good. But you know, the Vikings reportedly had some interest in J.C. Jackson if he would have got cut. I mean, you could have done the trade, and Chargers still would have ate most of that contract. But do the Vikings get into the pool? Do the Vikings look for a free agent veteran cornerback? Uh, do the Vikings trade for Patrick Sertain the second? I don't know. I, I don't know at this point. But... Uh, it, it is a concern right now. Next up, number nine, Kirk Cousins is not the problem. Uh, I understand. Uh, again, we've prided ourselves on calling a spade a spade and calling balls and strikes with Kirk when he was the problem in 2018, 2019. We, we said it uh, when he's been good the last couple of years. We've said it. I, and I, I know that people will harp on him. Oh, just throw up the Hail Mary and uh, see what happens. Receivers weren't even in the end zone yet. Or, or how about maybe the offensive line gives him some time? I mean, as good as Darisaw and O'Neal are, it's just th- there's still issues. Three sacks, uh, also had at least 10 quarterback hits uh, against the Chiefs. And this entire time, I mean, Kirk gets blamed for everything. And that's what happens when you're the quarterback and get the big paycheck. And, oh, hell, hey, if um, if Kirk didn't take his family to the Twins game on Tuesday, his day off, maybe uh, 
Hawkinson doesn't drop three balls. Uh, maybe Madison doesn't drop that touchdown. Maybe the receivers total don't drop seven, eight passes. Maybe that, I mean, that's what's going on. And I understand you have to balance looking for the future franchise quarterback. I get it. And especially with the Vikings staring down the barrel at one and four, fully understand. But also, if you just take a rookie quarterback and plug him in for Kirk Cousins right now, does that solve everything? Not necessarily. I mean, look at Bryce Young and the Panthers. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, but Kirk is far from the issue right now. He really is. Main issue for the Vikings is depth in both trenches and also starters in both trenches, frankly, and also uh, quarterback. That's what it is right now. Uh, lastly, number 10. Next two games are must-wins. So uh, you got the Bears at Soldier Field. Frankly, it's at, at least it's at noon. There you go. And then Monday night, dun, 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 you got, got the Niners hosting the Niners. No big deal. Sh- shouldn't be uh, too large a- of an issue. So sort of is what it is. I mean, you are what, you, what your record says you are. And just because the Vikings have lost all f- uh, four games by a single score, just because the Vikings have lost three home games, uh, just because they easily could be 5-0 and uh, if a bounce goes their way or if they don't make a dumb mistake or if a ref actually calls uh, a neutral game, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter right now. But, you know, the Vikings can get off the mat. The Vikings are too damn talented. We'll see what happens with JJ's injury. And we'll just go from there, man. Let's go from there. And uh, I, I, oh, well, the Vikings should just tank and lose games. Well, maybe they'll just lose games by trying their hardest, <laughs> uh, which is what happened so far. I mean, you, you got to smile through the pain. Grin and bear it. Uh, but that's it. Uh, Tell the truth Monday. Ten truths about the uh, 2023 Minnesota Vikings. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once worth the work, put a little something in the bedmo. But to next time, skull production value.